So it's a typical Thursday night. As a third year, gone are the days of uh, beer pong Thursdays. And I'm hunched over my computer in the basement of Huang Engineering Building, the clock ticking toward the deadline at 11. For the past year, as part of my joint degree program, I've been trying to teach machines how to learn like humans. But I'm here today to tell you about the time the machines taught me something about how to learn and live more fully. So that day in the basement, I'm building this program that's supposed to learn how to play blackjack on its own using a type of machine learning called reinforcement learning, which is the same kind that was used by Google's AlphaGo. But unlike AlphaGo, my program is acting like a kid that never learns. It keeps making the same mistakes, like hitting on 19 or 20, and sometimes standing pat on three. For those of you who are not, non -bla uh, not blackjack players, those are not good moves to make. <laughs> I'm super frustrated. See, what my program is supposed to do is actually quite intuitive. It only needs to do two things. First, it's just as any kid would do when given a new toy, it's supposed to try out a bunch of things and collect experiences. Like, try hitting on 10 or 15 or 20 and experience what happens. And second, it's supposed to stop and extract lessons from those experiences. Learn things like, aha, Whenever I choose hit when I'm on 20, bad things happen. Not going to do that again. So I spend an hour of debugging, and I feel like my soul just got sucked out of my body. And, and I realize that I've somehow built a program that's doing a great job of collecting experiences, running around doing all these things, and not stopping to learn anything from those experiences. Too busy running around to learn anything from experience. That actually didn't sound that unfamiliar. <laughs> As no stranger to what seems to be the GSB mantra of do more, fit more stuff in schedule, and be more productive, I saw a little bit of myself in that program. I had to ask myself, am I like that program too? Are we like that program that never learns from experience? So unfortunately, I realized, yes, I was like that program. <laughs> More than once, for example, I walked out of class thinking, wow, that speaker had such clarity of thought. I'd love to learn how to do that. And I never did because I had to run to the next BBL or the next coffee chat. I never took the time to think through which of his comments struck me as insightful and what it would look like if I tried to imitate that line of thinking on a different topic. So you might be thinking, wait a second, we're not like computers. Important things will stick in, my memory, in our memory, even if we don't stop and reflect, right? That's exactly what I was thinking, too. And to see if it was true, and I really wanted it to be true, I decided to re-examine a learning moment from my own experience to see if I truly got out everything that I should have, knowing that I didn't have the time to reflect on that experience. The experience that came to my mind was one of my proudest moments from Army days in Korea cleaning the second floor bathroom. <laughs> so I had just made corporal that month. It's a pretty big deal. You know, I, was, I had this new prestigious responsibility as the leader of the cleaning squad. Um, so 10 or so privates from my platoon who cleaned after work every day. And how we clean these places never changes over time. In a barrack dominated by this oppressive hierarchical culture, you simply do what you're told by your superiors. But this time, we really wanted to bring some fun and creativity into this. So for the first couple of days, um, two privates walked around and jotted down what everyone was doing at any moment. Then they learned to create this chart that showed us the sequence of activities that we, uh, we took and where the bottlenecks were. <laughs> True consultant style. <laughs> and, and with that, we debated how to make our process better. We'd ask things like, should we double the personnel for wiping the toilets? So whoever's watering down doesn't have to wait. Or we're using toothbrushes to clean the urinals. Not ours, but the spare ones. <laughs> um, but the surface area is too small, so it takes a long time to clean. How can we get normal brushes? We tried having two area captains, as well as having one centralized cleaning czar system. <laughs> and after a month of experiments, 
we cut down the time from 30 minutes to 14 minutes. And you might be wondering if I'm being facetious about this being one of my proud moments, but I'm kind of not. <laughs> and if anybody asks, what did you learn from that experience? I say something like this. I learned how to motivate a team, give ownership, and change an organizational culture. A fine answer, specific enough to fool others, and most importantly myself, that I've learned enough from that experience. But if anybody further pushes and asks me, but really, how do you give ownership? What actionable insights did you learn from that experience you can use here and now? I'd be stumped. I have this log of experience in my head, but contrary to my hopes, my brain didn't magically distill insights from that experience. Sure, some of those had popped up in my head before, um, but I assumed those were important enough to stick in my memory, and sure enough, they did it. So one weekend, I spent 30 minutes to reflect on that experience, and the lessons I walked away this time were of completely different resolution. For example, I learned about the moment that I become susceptible to inadvertently taking ownership away from my team and how to counteract that temptation. Or the tactics I can use to address norm violations in a stern way uh, when I'm also trying to build a positive collaborative culture. So there it was, the verdict. The high quality insights doesn't stick in your memory automatically. I had to do the work to get them. How much of invaluable experience you're having here at the GSB are you extracting lessons from? Are you learning enough from your experience? So why did I bring up this complicated computer algorithm to make a simple point that we should stop and reflect to learn? Because it exposes an inconvenient truth. When dealing with fuzzy things that are hard to quantify like self-development or learning, we often choose to believe in mental models that are convenient to us rather than the ones that might be more accurate. So when it comes to our belief about how we learn from experience, it makes our lives so much easier to simply believe in this mental model of aging whiskey, where as with whiskey, time takes care of everything and it somehow magically distills insights from your subconscious reservoir <laughs> of experience. But as much as I love whiskey, I believe fundamental, the fundamental relationship between experience and learning is more accurately captured by the mental model of that dumb blackjack program. If we don't stop and reflect, we will not learn. We have to put in the work to get what's important to us because no one else, not time, not our subconscious, is going to do that job for us. So I hope this program, this dumb program, could act as the same wake-up call as it did to me and motivate you to spend five minutes every day to make sense of what happened that day. I hope we can all live and learn to be a little better today than we were yesterday. <laughs>